Today on Real Garage, we're talking about Pulse TIG because we've been doing quite a bit of it lately. And I remember back in season one, episode five, when we did the fuel cell frame build that we would talk about Pulse TIG in future episodes. Well, the future is today. Recently, I was at Gear FX where I got to see them build custom rear ends. In that process, they were TIG welding these things together, but they were using the Pulse mode on their Dynasty machines. I thought it'd be a good time to revisit Pulse and actually explain the parameters and what goes into Pulse welding. So I'm going to be using aluminum for this project, but they were welding steel, so it's still similar as far as how the Pulse actually works but I think you'll get a better visual if I actually draw it out on the board and what parameters that you're actually adjusting in the pulse mode. So typically with the more professional TIG machines, there's gonna be four parameters you're gonna be adjusting when you're in the pulse mode. The first one is gonna be part of your peak amperage. So we're just gonna call that obviously peak amperage. The next one is gonna be pulses per second, abbreviated PPS. The next adjustment that you have to work with is going to be your peak time. And the last adjustment we'll be using is called your background amperage. And that's usually expressed in a percentage. Okay, and it's going to be in a, a percentage of your peak amperage or whatever you're welding with. So your peak amperage may be set a little bit higher, but you're still working with the foot pedal. Okay. So graphically, it would look like this. So if I start at zero and I have my peak amperage set at, let's say, 100 amps. When I step on the foot pedal, my power is going to go from zero up to that 100 amp level if I'm using that foot pedal to its maximum position. And then it's going to be there if our pulses are set at one pulse per second, it's going to be there for a peak time of, let's say, 50%. So that's 50% of one pulse per second, so that's roughly a half a second. Then it's going to go down to a background setting. Now that background percentage, let's call that 25% just to make my math easy. So that's going to go down for the background setting down to 25 amps. So it's going to repeat that. So for a half a second, it's going to be at your 100 amps. For the other half a second, it's going to be at 25. Then it's going to repeat that cycle again for a half a second and then back a half a second off. So it's going to keep repeating that 1001, 1002, half a second on, half a second off. So what do those adjustments do, right? So if I want to increase my power setting, let's say I'm working with a material thickness and these settings aren't giving me enough power to work with to melt that piece of aluminum or steel or whatever you're working with, right? So in this case, typically if I was welding at 100 amps to 120 amps, I could weld eighth inch aluminum. But you gotta remember that amperage is always on. But now because we're spending half the time at a lower amperage level, if you were to average those two out, I'm still only gonna be welding at around that, you know, 65 to 75 amps, you know, somewhere in there. So I'm actually got less total power. So in order to weld that same thickness with your pulser on, I'm gonna to have to either increase my peak amperage or increase the time I'm spending at that peak amperage, okay? Those are the two ways you'll be able to get more average energy or more average amperage to weld with, okay? Increase your peak amperage or increase the peak time. Keep in mind that the advantages of pulse are to reduce the total heat going to the piece, which also reduces warpage, especially if you're working on thinner materials. There are other ways you can use pulse too. If you go to a higher pulse rate and you turn your pulses per second up into the hundreds of pulses per second, it agitates the weld puddle really fast and it helps drive that arc into the piece, gives you more of a focused arc and it also agitates the weld puddle to give you a better grain structure of the weld bead, which is really cool if you're working with dissimilar materials. So graphically, if we increase our pulses per second, let's go from one to, let's say, three pulses per second, it would look like this, right? One, 
Go down to 25, up, and we still have that 50% on and 50% off time, right? So here we got 50% on, 50 off, 50 on, 50 off, 50 on. Okay. We have that same structure. So you can see from my normal cycle from one pulse per second to three pulses per second, what the difference is. So the sound, the actual tone is gonna increase. Another way to use your pulser is if you're trying to learn how to TIG weld, okay, and you wanna learn that filler metal deposition where you're adding the filler metal to the puddle, sometimes the pulser is a, is a neat way to help you learn that rhythm. And what I do is I set my pulser anywhere from say 0.8 to maybe one pulse per second. What that'll do is it starts to give me that rhythm where every time that machine pulses to its high level, I'm dabbing the filler metal. Every time it pulses to that low level, okay, then I'm moving the TIG torch over, waiting for that next pulse. Okay. So as I'm learning to deposit that filler metal into the weld puddle, I'm making sure that I'm getting that rhythm just right. I've got to anticipate when that machine's going to pop back up to its high level. So every time it pulses high, now if you're having a problem getting that filler metal into that puddle quick enough, you can do two things. You can either lower that pulse per second, which gives you a little more time to put that filler metal in the puddle, or you can increase that peak time again and that means it'll stay on. That arc will be at its high level for a little longer period of time, giving you the time you need to deposit the filler metal in. So for this exercise, I'm gonna be using the Dynasty 280. The Dynasty 280 has the ability to change all those four pulse parameters that we spoke about earlier. If you're working on a lower end machine that has pulse capabilities, it may not have all those adjustments to it. They may preset some of those at the factory. So you may only have control over, say, your peak amperage and maybe your pulses per second. They might not give you the background settings or the peak time settings. But on the Dynasties, I have my peak amperage right now set at 175 amps. To turn the pulser on, hit the button, my pulses per second is at 0.9. So this is gonna be an example of a slower pulse that's gonna help me manipulate or add my filler metal to the weld puddle. My peak time, I'm setting it at 50%. That's 50% of that peak level or whatever I have my foot pedal set at. Background amperage is now set at 25%. Okay. I'm actually gonna set that up a little bit higher. I'm gonna go up to about 30%. You wanna keep that split apart far enough that you keep the arc established and the arc is stable on the background setting, but not high enough that it actually adds too much heat to the piece and keeps the piece in that molted or melted state. Warning, read and follow all labels and your owner's manuals. Okay, this is an example of a slow pulse where it's gonna help me with adding my filler metal. So you can see as the arc jumps up to its high level, I'm adding the filler metal. As the arc goes to its low level, I'm moving the torch over. Now, once you get that rhythm established, you're going to want to start increasing that pulser, the pulses per second. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn you in from a step welder where you're stepping the weld as you're adding the filler metal and moving over, adding and moving, to being more of a consistent, even moving, you know, TIG welder where you're just adding the filler metal and the torch is moving at a constant rate. So I'm going to make that quick adjustment. I'm going to jump up my pulses per second and I'm not going to go that far, only to about 1.2, maybe 1.3. That same 1.3 to 1.4 pulses per second is also great for doing a continuous seam weld with the filler metal right in the weld joint. 
So like I said before, if I'm welding, say the, the long tank runs on a, on a radiator tank to the cores, or if I'm doing any long sheets where I'm, I need to be just continuously welding, I'll lay that filler metal right in the weld joint and let the machine do the work for me and actually wash it into the joint. So I'm gonna show you that right now. I'm just gonna weld these two pieces together and I'm doing an outside corner weld. So I purposely left the TIG filler in the joint at the end of the weld just to show you that I was laying the filler metal in the joint the whole time, wasn't really even moving it. I was just letting the machine do the work for me and wash that filler metal into the weld joint. The next adjustment we're going to make with the machine is we're going to turn the machine up faster. We're going to give it some higher pulses per second. Okay, we're going to go up to 150 to 200 pulses per second. What that's going to do again is going to agitate that weld puddle. I'm just going to deposit the filler metal normally with my normal rhythm. Okay? So that weld puddle is still going to have that ripple pattern to it, but the high pulses per second is also going to agitate that puddle quicker, so your ripple pattern will probably be much tighter. So from an operator standpoint, what I noticed there is because the high pulses per second actually caused the arc to be even a little bit more narrower, I actually had to put a little bit more throttle into the pedal to give me enough weld area where the puddle performs or where the puddle starts. So when the puddle starts, I actually had to put more foot pedal into it to actually get the amperage that I needed because the pulser forces that current into a much tighter zone. So it does look better. The actual weld puddle is actually a little bit shinier and cleaner. Ultimately, you're gonna to have to experiment with what's gonna be right for your application. So if you're working with thinner materials, the pulser will help reduce the total heat going into the piece, thereby reducing warpage. Or with the similar metals, let's say you're working with steel and chromoly, that higher pulse rates help agitate the weld puddle to give you a better grain structure between the dissimilar steels. Or even with aluminum, that higher pulse rate does help agitate that weld puddle. And even if you're working with different alloys, if you're welding a 6061 to a 5000 series alloy, that higher pulse rate is going to give you a better weld grain structure. Okay. Also in areas where there is crack sensitivity, the higher pulses per second agitates the weld puddle again, giving you a better grain structure, which thereby also reduces the chances of cracking. We use pulse a lot in the motorsports industry in TIG welding headers together because of the high harmonics of the engine and the vibration that you see, we would always experience cracking, especially at the flange where the thicker material is welded to the thinner material. Pulse is a good way to eliminate that problem as well. Next time on Real Garage, I'm cutting off the two side air boxes because I'm gonna need all the room I can get in the engine compartment.